Welcome back to one of the most complicated miniseries based on one of my favorite consoles of all time, the Sega Saturn. Today, I will be dusting off this incredible system and talk about my collection. Heck, while I captured all the video from my Saturn, I used a wireless Saturn pad from Retrobit that worked like a charm. I put the link on Amazon if anyone wants the best fighting pad ever, and it also works on PC as well and that's what I use to play my Street Fighter 5. With that, here are my favorite fighting games part 1 of the Sega Saturn. We will be going in alphabetical order so it's easier to review but if you must know my favorite upon favorite upon favorite fighting game on the Sega Saturn it's going to be Street Fighter vs X-Men just to get that out of the way but here we go to number 1 Released in 1998, Astra Superstars was a game by Sunsoft that was an over-the-top fighter with beautiful 2D graphics that originally played on the STV arcade hardware, which was also based in the Sega Saturn, and which is why it was so easy to port. Designed by Santa Claus, no joke, this was a 2D airborne fighter where the player can bounce the opponent off the corners of the screen. A crazy, but with easy gameplay, it made it super duper accessible. Released in 1994, Asuka 120% Burning Fest is a 2D fighter based in a private school for women that hold martial arts tournaments annually. Released by FamilySoft, all the characters share the same moveset, but each can be used in different combos. This was a super fun game that pushes you to try to juggle your opponent as much as possible, almost like a prequel to the air combos that Capcom would introduce later on. Released in 1997, Cyberbots by Capcom is a mecha 2D fighting game with Street Fighter type gameplay. Definitely faster gameplay, but the use of robots expanded the way you fight with weapons, various armor to consider, and the reach of the robot's abilities led to a different kind of fighting similar to Armored Core, but much more rooted to just one-on-one -on -one fighting. Hey, big combo! Released in 1997 for the Saturn, famed director Tobonobu Itagaki and Tecmo brought Dead or Alive using the Sega's Model 2 arcade board to the arcade. Like Virtual Fighter 2, this game had similar gameplay with the blocking like a 2D fighter by pushing back on the control pad. This game also had one attribute nobody else had except for Mai from SNK's Fatal Fury series. 3D political breast physics. Yep, sex sells and still does as there are six more installments for the DOA franchise. The game used high resolution graphics that only the Saturn could do at that time. Hey. 
Released in 1997, Sega brought two franchise arcade hits into one fighting game, Fighters Megamix, starring Virtual Fighter and Fighting Vipers. This crossover had the cages for the Fighting Vipers and no boundaries for the Virtual Fighters. This game matches its unique personality perfectly as you had to relearn what you did in previous games to fully grasp the difference between the gameplay that it had to offer. Although lower resolution and polygon count, the game runs silky smooth due to so much packed into just one disc. That's right, it had one CD that could only fit about 650 megabytes, unlike the Blu-rays we know of today. Released in 1997, Fighting History, Carnal's Revenge, was a Neo Geo port by Data East. This 2D fighting game is similar to Street Fighter in gameplay. I had a lot of fun with this game, even though the characters were nothing to write home about. Due to its playability, I gave this game a chance and I'm glad I did. Its fast-paced action gets you past the button mashing and plays like butter. <laughs> Big tornado! Big tornado! Big tornado! Big tornado! A 1997 release by Atlas, Groove on Fight introduced a two-player tag team system during combat. This game was the fourth installation of the Power Instinct series, found on a 16-bit consoles, and this is a huge upgrade. With gameplay comparable to X-Men vs. Street Fighter, the game really pushes the player to test and retest combos. Gameplay is a bit stiff at times as the characters animate nice but don't feel too lively in comparison to other 2D fighters, which is its only knock on the game. <laughs> A 1997 release, The King of the Fighters 1997 was released as a port from the Neo Geo. This game needed the 1 meg RAM cart to play and boy did they cram a lot of animations in this one as it moves exactly like the arcade. Basically a huge tournament with almost every SNK character ever created, this version was the first to choose different characters from other teams to make your favorite team. Silky Smooth animation only had crazy load times was its only downfall. At least it was faster than a Neo Geo CD. In 1997, Sega's last Bronx was extremely popular in Japan with their weapon-based system. You play as a rival gangs with a surprisingly deep story for a fighting game. Like Virtual Fighter, you can pretty much pick up and play as you already know the basics of punch, 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 kick. But this time, it's with weapons. The Saturn version was in high res mode, which was also a delight with its 60 frames per second smoothness. <laughs> Released in 1997, Capcom released their sequel to X-Men Children of the Atom with Marvel Super Heroes. Encompassing the story behind the Infinity Gauntlet saga, Capcom introduced their first dedicated air combo system. This created multiple combos including infinite ones. One of my favorite games I played and mastered in the arcades before moving on to the Saturn. But this animation heavy game pushed the system to its limit even with a ram cart with slowdown. Fire. 
Released in 1998, Capcom unveiled Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. Coming off of the success of X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Capcom added more fighters, replaced the gameplay with the one found in Marvel Super Heroes with a new variable assist, which had your partner come in to attack, but also was vulnerable to an attack. With the 4 meg RAM cart, the Saturn version was hailed as the perfect conversion to a home console. Released in 1998, Capcom would release their popular Street Fighter and Vampire series in a crossover called Pocket Fighter. This game is an extremely simplified version of a fighting game made for all ages with just three buttons as your main attack. You would use gems found in their puzzle game, Puzzle Fighter, to help gain powers against their opponent. Gameplay, like all Capcom games, is pretty smooth with very delightful, colorful graphics. Released in late 1997, SNK released Real Bout Fatal Fury Special. A sequel to Real Bout, this game offers new graphics and a return of two-plane fighting like the original Fatal Fury. A complete overhaul on the combo system, it is smoother and much easier to pick up and play. You can chain combos, almost like Capcom's Vampire Hunter, and this is one of the best SNK games to just pick up and play with ease. Released in 1997, Samurai Shodown 4, Amakusa's Revenge, acts as the final chapter from the Samurai Shodown series from 1 and 2. Samurai Showdown 3 is a prequel to the original Samurai Showdown. I love this game as Charlotte returns as a playable character missing from number 3 and now gives you two bars of life. Not just one, but two. Not too much is tweaked here except for your ability to do a suicide moves that can bring you from near death to a possible win. Another great game from SNK. <laughs> Hope you like part one of my favorite fighting games collection on the Sega Saturn. Look out for part two when we go Capcom heavy with some of the best fighters in history. That's it for this episode. Please like and subscribe. And Greg, take us out of here. <laughs> Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh-huh.